one approach that you can use for optimizing for reads is to try to group all the data that you'll need for a particular query into an entity that you can fetch by a, a key in one go. So let me give you an example of this. Let's say that I have the comments page that we described before. And so for each of these comments, we're going to have the user name that posted it. We're going to have their particular comment. And then we might have maybe the hometown or uh, the country of the uh, user. And maybe we have Belgium, some other information. And so we have a set of these comments. Now, one way that we could support this is we could have a set of user entities where each one has a name and a country. And then we could have a set of comment entries where each comment, and, and as well as having the text for it, has the user ID or key for the user that created it. So every time we want to go and create this particular page, what we have to do is we're going to first query for all of the keys uh, or all of the comments for that particular page. So we would probably also have some you know, page or product ID or something to associate comments and go and search for comments that are relevant to display here. So we get the list of all the comments back. Now, once we've gotten that list of comments back, we can go and get the user IDs for each user that are in this table and hopefully be smart about it and, and only then query for the name and country of all the users that are in this table or that are in this list of comments. And then we go and get back the user and name and country for each particular user that posted a comment. Now, this is certainly one way to do it and helps us you know, keep our database more normalized because we're only storing name and country in one place. But the downside is, is that we go and get this list of comments, and then we have to go down and get this list of users in order to display the user's name and the country that they're from. So when we display this page, we have essentially two round trips that we're dealing with. Another way to do it would be Rather than having a separate comment and user, what we can do is we can have a separate user, but our comment can directly embed the user name and country into the comment object. So this way, when we need to go and display this page, so let's call this approach one, and we'll call this approach two, um, We'll put a little verses here to show that these things aren't related. When we need to display this page, all we do is go down and fetch the list of these comment entities or objects and return it. And we can instantly display the page because we have all of the information we need. So if this is a mobile device and we want to very quickly give it all the information that it needs, now obviously the server would be doing these two round trips. So the mobile device hopefully isn't doing these round trips. This should be something that's done on the server, even if we're doing it this way. But either way, we're going to get data back to that mobile client to display much faster if we have an entity that has exactly the information that is needed to display this particular page in the mobile interface. So if we design our entities in ways that give us exactly the data that we need, it can make it much faster. Another way that we could do this is if we knew that we weren't going to have too many comments, we could actually have, and we weren't going to be writing them to them too often, is we could even take all of the comments for a particular product and have a single um, comments for, let's say, product um, entity that directly inside of it stores the raw text of all of this. So in this case, we have multiple of these comment objects that we're going and fetching. But we could just as easily have a single aggregate object that puts all of the information that we need to display this page into one entity that we just look up with one key value lookup. So there's lots of different approaches. And they'll give you different you know, performance, and different ones will make sense in different cases. Probably in most cases, if you're really trying to optimize for 
the reads, it maybe makes more sense to do something like this, but maybe it doesn't. Maybe it makes sense to have comments for product and embed them all. And you really have to look at each case. Now the downside is here we have normalized data. So if the user wants to go and update the country that they live in, they, they are currently in the US and they are moving to France. Now they're going to have to go and update their, Fran you know, their country. If they're currently uh, uh, in France and they're moving to the US, we're going to have to go and update their country. Well, here that's no big deal. We just go and update the user entity. If we do it here, now we have a problem. We have to, if we, they update their country, we also have to go and update every instance in the comment uh, uh, entries where their country shows up. So we have to find every one of that user's uh, comments. We then have to find the country field in it in the, or in the value or however it's being stored and update it over and over. And similarly, we'd have to do something like that for here. So that, that denormalization and these different approaches, they can make reads really, really fast, but they make, make writes or changing just one entry in the data really expensive. So you have to be careful that if you're going to go for a model like this, or a model like this, that the data that you're denormalizing into these things hopefully is not something that will change frequently. So if you are duplicating data over and over, you don't want that data item that you're duplicating over and over to uh, be something that will change frequently. So username, for example, you could have a system where you could say a user cannot change their name as long as they are uh, have an account with me. I'm going to have them have the same username. They can never change it. They can change their email address to their heart's content, but they can't change their username. So going and duplicating username in all of the comments probably isn't going to hurt you. But if they can change their username, or you're doing first and last name, and the person can change their name potentially, or you're going to allow them to, then suddenly it is expensive. So you have to think through those issues when you're trying to make a design decision about whether you're going to do something like this or you're going to try to optimize it and make it a really fast read that has all of the information already embedded into the entities that you're getting back or the single entity that you're getting back. But you are understanding that you're going to pay a price if any of this duplicated data ends up changing. And that price is, is that you're going to have to search through all these entities and change it in 10 or 100 or 1,000 places rather than one place. So, Every time you duplicate that data, you're adding write overhead if you try to go and update it in some way.